Following Brexit, the British government said it had signed one of its biggest trade deals with Turkey. Now, just over three years later, it's in negotiations to update it. Defence industry cooperation is also increasing. The Turkish government is in talks to buy 40 Eurofighter Typhoon jets, a project the United Kingdom is also involved in. I'm Andrew Hopkins, and I've been speaking to the British Business and Trade Minister, Kami Badenok, one-on-one. Kami Badenok, thank you very much for talking to TRT World. One of the reasons why you're here in Turkey is to talk about renegotiating the free trade deal that you signed with Turkey back in 2020. And at that time, the British government was saying it was the fifth biggest deal signed after Brexit. So why do you need to renegotiate it now? What's it going to consist of and how long do you think these talks are going to take? So what we are trying to do now that we have an independent trade policy is think more about the future and think more about the shape of our economy. So the current uh, FTA, which we signed uh, in 2020, as you say, was big, but it was very much focused on how we did business before, not how we're going to do business in the future. So things like digital trade, digitalization, uh, more of an emphasis on services, those are the sorts of things which we want to put into uh, a new FTA, which we're hoping to launch later on in 2024. A lot of the criticism at the time of Brexit and in the years afterwards was that some of these deals that were being signed at that point Mm. weren't bringing enough value to the Mm. British economy. So is this what you're doing now, a sort of an admission that you didn't get the correct deal the first time around in 2020? No, no, no. It's um, actually that we're doing two different things. So when we first left the European Union, the immediate thing was making sure that we had continuity. So it was about replicating most of uh, what we had with, uh, within the EU. So a lot of the FTAs we signed there were rollover deals, continuity deals, that we had this when we were in the EU, and we're going to create a new, uh, a new one for leaving that is UK specific. And the Turkey one was slightly different back in 2020 because we left the customs union. So it couldn't be uh, the same rollover deal. So it isn't about uh, there having been an error. What we are showing is that when you have an independent trade policy, trade is a continuous uh, piece of work. It's not something that you do you know, uh, and then leave, oh, we finished. That's, that's not how it works. Every day there is new work to be done on trade, sometimes with new countries, sometimes new relationships, but sometimes strengthening existing ones. And that's really what this FTA uh, is all about. And how long are these talks going to take? Because I don't think they've actually properly started. No, no, yet, so we haven't, we haven't formally started. Uh, today, what I was doing was uh, a JETCO, so a Joint Economic Trade Commission, uh, which I co-hosted with uh, Trade Minister Bolat. But actually, uh, we have started the preparations for our FTA. In the UK, we have a specific process, w- which uh, is uh, related to how our parliament functions. We have a call for input. We make sure there is a consultation what a business is looking for in a free trade agreement. Because the agreement is not about me as a government minister or uh, government to government. Free trade agreements are about people, are about business, it's about jobs. So we need businesses, we need the individuals, the trade associations, the business associations, and so on, to tell us what they are looking for before we start the negotiation. That way, when we conclude, uh, as we did with our free trade agreement with Japan, with Australia and New Zealand, and of course CPTPP, the new trade bloc that we joined, all of these we had uh, business input first to make sure that what we signed delivered for the people of the country. So it seems like they could take quite a while to finalise, and according to the electoral rules in the United Kingdom, you're Mm. going to have to have a general election in the next 12 months. Mm. So what guarantee can you give if your government loses, for instance, the election and there's a new government that these talks would continue and they will still be in agreement? Well, uh, as a Conservative government minister, I can only give guarantees about what my government uh, is going to do. And obviously, we are still hoping to win the next election. That's what we're going to be fighting for. But at the end of the day, uh, Turkey's relationship is not with me. Uh, Turkey's relationship is not with specific uh, governments. 
it is with countries. We have a strong relationship already. I think it would be crazy for any government to decide that it didn't want to do anything and take that for granted. You can't just assume that because you have a good relationship today that that will continue tomorrow. You have to continue to work on it and to build on it. So I would be expecting that any government that cared about UK-Turkey relationships would continue uh, to negotiate on a free trade agreement that is of mutual benefit to both our countries. Do you think there's a possibility all these talks and this deal could be sorted out within that 12-month period? Because yes. Turkey has done that with some other countries recently, the UAE, which I think was took about 10 months, something it's, like it, that. It so. is always possible, but I never give a deadline. Uh, I'm currently in the middle of negotiating uh, a free trade agreement with India. We should be very specific there that it's not about a deadline. It's about the substance of the, of the deal. Ministers can sign all sorts of pieces of paper. That is not enough to show that what you have done is of substance is meaningful. So for us, it is about making sure that we have something that is appealing to businesses and not just rushing to, to, sign, uh, to sign an agreement that might not work in practice. So it will take as long as it, will take as long as it takes. As far as I understand it, the, one of the things that was not included in the original deal in 2020 mm. were, as you mentioned, things like uh, digital issues, services, that kind of thing, some aspects of mm. agriculture. So that's correct as far as I understand it. It was almost like a, a sort of the initial deal was based on the best parts of the eu Turkey customs union that was in operation before. Is that correct? Uh, uh, that's, that is mostly uh, correct, yes. I wasn't the one who negotiated that free trade agreement, so I can't go into the specific line-by-line -line details of where the differences are. But really, what we're trying to do now is focus not just on the free trade agreement, but about the strategic partnership that the UK and Turkey have together. Whether or not we sign a free trade agreement, there is already a lot of business that takes place, whether it's in construction, financial services, defense, and our two economies complement each other very well. And there, there is the connectivity because of the, uh, the location uh, that Turkey is uh, in between Europe and Asia, and of course, uh, where the UK is uh, also facing east and west with our, with, with our time zone. There is so much that we can do together. And for instance, just this afternoon, uh, we announced a 1.2 billion uh, pound loan guarantee, which UK export finance, our equivalent of Exim, is providing for a consortium to build, um, to build a railway line. This is the third such one we've done, I think, in the last two years. So this is really what uh, my visit is about. It's not just about an FTA, but it's about continuing to work and build on our relationship, the UK's relationship with Turkey. As I said, assuming that things will just happen uh, and we don't need to do any work is how a lot of relationships start to uh, deteriorate. And we really value uh, Turkey as a partner, not just on trade and business, it is also a NATO ally. There is so much that we can do in terms of working and cooperating together. So my visit as the business and trade minister working with Minister Bolat is showing uh, many of the uh, business associations, many of the companies here, uh, the opportunities that we can have to create jobs, which is really what it's about. So it, it's not just about the, the, you know, the government activity. It is how we can make life better and more meaningful for the people in Turkey as well as people in the UK. I'm interested, though, in your perspective as uh, a member of a government which is now outside of the EU, because mm. this, the idea that the original deal that you signed was sort of had large parts of the eu Turkey customs union mm. and you're now updating it quite quickly and of course this is an issue that Turkey with the european union has been talking about for many years wanting to get a move on to update this customs union quite quickly so i'm wondering what your perspective is on this whether you have a view on whether uh, what the the hold up if you like between the eu and Turkey on this particular issue do you think the, the eu is missing out here in some way um, I don't have a particularly strong view on uh, the EU-Turkey customs union. This is obviously something that I know uh, so as a UK government minister, when we were in a customs union with Turkey, we had a, we can't speak for other countries, it, it, it worked very well, but we know that even outside that, it's something that we can continue to, to ensure we don't lose out too much on. Uh, in terms of where the EU wants to go, I know that there's a lot of activity, uh, different countries have uh, elections, those sorts 
sorts of things can slow things down. So it may be that. But it wouldn't be for me to comment on two separate countries' uh, trade negotiations. We obviously are close allies with the EU and with Turkey, and we want to make sure that we are working well uh, with both sides. And we hope that, um, that they will continue to have good relationships as well. You've been talking to Turkish investors today as well, I think. Now, in Turkey, there's been quite a few economic challenges recently, high inflation and such like, but there's new ministers in charge of various departments this last year. But why would you say that in these circumstances, Turkish people should come and invest in the UK? Um, what uh, the uh, business people told me, which was very reassuring and very encouraging to hear, was that there is a lot of trust in the UK system that the strong relationships that uh, the UK and Turkey have had uh, historically going back, uh, not, if not just many decades, in fact centuries, means that people feel that they can rely on the, uh, on the businesses there, they can rely on the rule of law, they like the skills mix that is in the, uh, in the UK, they believe that the, you know, the strong financial services sector which we have in the UK is a huge driver of that. You know, we had companies like HSBC and Standard Chartered who do uh, a lot of uh, good business facilitation in Turkey. Those are, those are the things that they, they look for. You can't, you know, fund a new railway line or a, a new airline and aviation sector without having um, these sorts of financial uh, systems in place. And having that big pool of capital really helps. Uh, they find that the, in terms of the time zone, ease of doing business, it's very straightforward. And if you look at, for instance, the, uh, the announcement between Airbus and Turkish Airlines, you know, a British company, Rolls-Royce producing some of the engines, Turkish Airlines, those are the sorts of things which show how we facilitate a lot of significant business that creates jobs. We know that the, the Turkish government is in talks at the moment to buy 40 Eurofactor Typhoon jets for its military. Now this is a project that the British government is involved in alongside Germany, Italy and Spain. Mm -hmm. Now according to what the Turkish government is saying, uh, all of these countries are in agreement to do the sale apart from Germany, but mm -hmm. they're saying that the UK is helping in this regard, is talking to Germany to try and persuade them. So mm -hmm. what can you tell us about the state of these talks and what are you telling Germany to try and persuade them to join in? <laughs> um, so uh, this, is, th this is an issue that has been ongoing uh, for, for some time. There was a change uh, of government uh, in Germany and of course uh, the Green Party is, is in coalition and that is changing some of the emphasis that they are having. Uh, now I can't comment on the, the German political side. What I can say is that from a UK perspective, Turkey is a very, very close NATO ally. We have a strong defence partnership. In fact, Grand Shafts, our defence secretary, was here with Defence Minister Gula. So they are cooperating and they're working together to see what can be done. I don't have any new information on that, but this is a project that we in the UK support and we will continue to support our defence uh, interests, either with Turkey uh, or with other countries. Kami Beydenok, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you.